a program here coming on Channel 6 News, WPSD News, in regards to the major events that hit December the 10th pertaining to the Mayfield, Kentucky tornado damage that basically mutilated a whole town, a town of about 10,000 here in the southern region. I just wanted to let my viewers know that out of all the people that's been damaged in this area, not just in this area, but also those out west pertaining to all the fires and all the floods down south and either Louisiana or Texas, that this right here just about tops all tops of stories in regards to it being the saddest situation that I think that I've ever heard of to add insult to misery pertaining to those that have recently went through such of a scarring transfiguration, transfigurationable moment that was horrible to say the least in regards towards what these people recently had to go through. I wanted people to be able to see this for themselves because it is so devastating to even begin to think if you was in these people's shoes because of a freeze that has recently come down here to the southern region and they had to divert to another means of of uh, unthawing thawing out their their water lines and in addition to that it wound up costing them costing them their deaths please listen Two people are dead after a camper caught fire last night in Marshall County, Kentucky. It happened on Knowles Road. Local 6's Kaylee Anderson joins us now live from the scene. And Kaylee, how did the fire start? Mike, I spoke with the Marshall County Sheriff, Eddie McGuire, earlier, and he said that the pipes on the camper were freezing. He said they were thawing them with a propane heater. That's when the area around the camper caught on fire. It happened around sunset yesterday, and you can see behind me the smoke is still rolling. An 18-year-old female and an 83-year-old female were killed, a grandmother and a granddaughter. One male did make it out. He is the only survivor. And this area was hit hard by the December 10th tornado, so they were staying in the camper because their home was damaged. Live in Marshall County, Kaylee Anderson, WPSD, Local 6. That's just about as horrifying of a story that you can think of, of an individual family that has went through such devastation pertaining to the horrors of Satan coming down and causing this type of damage because the Bible says that in the last days, Satan will come down in great wrath, knowing that his time is short towards devastating uh, property and, and lives down here upon to the planet. But to think that those people went from bad to worse, if anybody knows how badly that that area got hit December the 10th, year 2021, how badly that that area got hit pertaining to devastation and to think that now they have finally uh, trans transfigurated their lives over into a trailer, an RV, and that's basically what I live in, or a pole barn here at 291 Thompson Road, Sharon, Tennessee, zip code 38255, but to think that somebody has went through this and then this happened to them on top of what already happened to them. It, it it's nightmarish. It goes beyond. It goes beyond horror. It's it's absolutely devastating to think that if you had a family member or yourself that had went through something like this, that has caused this type of life and limb and injury to various people. There's also some other things here that I want to skip off on. I'm going to go ahead and, and put the uh, TV back on in a minute in regards towards some other issues that I want to cover while I'm covering this. Um, for those who get a hold of, by chance of this, this recording, um, if you wasn't aware of the tornadoes that broke out, the tornado breakout December the 10th, and I, there was another breakout that happened like two days after that. 
two or three days after that. But if those that are out there that listen to this, if there's any way possible that they can help the people over in these devastated areas as well as Tennessee, because we, we got hit real hard in, in uh, Sandburg, Tennessee, Kenton, Tennessee, and Dresden, Tennessee, if there's any way possible that you can help by donations, please contact the local Red Cross services in this area are those that's taking charge of taking uh, contributions. And please help if you can, if you can. Because to see people's lives being, being tangled like this, and then to go from one bad experience to another, and the second one even more traumatic than the first one, it's just, it, it goes beyond anything that I think that I've ever heard of. So much. Okay, we shall have more on this tragic story tonight at five and six. It is Friday. Many of you are making plans for the weekend. Otherwise, plan for some bitter cold. Kaylee Bowers joins us now with a look ahead and a big question: When do we get above freezing? Mike, it's still going to take a little bit longer as we're going to be seeing temperatures above freezing going on into tomorrow. Today, we're going to go forward. We all know it's cold outside. Those that live down here today ain't supposed to hardly get over freezing. Now, I want to stop before I get out, get in on Described this. as a critical moment. I want to stop. To the climate deniers out there that don't understand the difference between the environment that we live in down here on the earth versus the environment up above us, just because we have a cold snap, does not validate the, cl the climate deniers towards saying climate global warming isn't real. We've had scientists after scientists after scientists, including NOVA, including uh, NASA, including other major organizations throughout the planet that has verified this pattern of global warming that is intensifying every year. It's not going the other way. It's going the other, it's going the opposite. It's getting worse. I personally believe that the reason why that the weather has become so abstract, um, the only way that I know to be able to explain it to where people can possibly understand it is that the ice continues to melt on a rate unbelievable in our North Pole and our South Poles. Because of these variations that are now becoming very, very um, unstable, imbalanced. Whenever we do get cold weather, sometimes it's actually above and beyond the temperatures of normalcy during the time that we get that cold weather because all of a sudden we have an ushering gush of wind that comes down from the south, South Pole, into Canada, and breaks into America, and it hits areas that had never been that cold in that time of month. So it breaks records by doing that. But ordinarily, if you'll check it out, if you'll understand weather, meteorologist, it only hangs around for a few days. But during those few days, it can cause devastating damages, just like what happened last year in Texas, where the cold front went all the way down to almost Brownsville, Texas, which is the southern end of Texas, that done billions of dollars worth of damage and cost, ain't no tellings how much despair and even human life tragedy. Uh, whenever a cold front like that goes down into Florida this time of year, it causes havoc to the agriculture uh, communities pertaining to the oranges, the citrus, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So because of the irregularities of what we're dealing with in areas that have become too hot and areas that's not as cold as what they ordinary are, now we're seeing these irregularities come up in our winter months as strongly as we see in the summer months, and I'm going to use this for an illustration, just a quick illustration of people that may be keeping up with climate global crisisness throughout the planet. But last year, there was a dome of heat that created itself over Northern California, 
parts of of uh, Oregon and up to Washington State, and went all the way up into Canada, and over towards Boise, and down towards um, Idaho, and over into co the uh, west side of Colorado. That was very, very abnormal for this Doma heat that got so hot that it was adding insult to misery, pertaining to the drought-stricken areas that was already drought-stricken, but it was hitting so hard that the people up in, the Canadians up in Canada had not ever, ever received these type of temperatures before, ever. That caused destruction, not only to their agriculture, but it also caused destruction to their population towards people not adequately being able to stay cool and wound up perishing on account of it. As we get further and further into this, and, and like I said, right now, I'm basically speaking to the climate deniers, the old people, the, the boomers, that was in total denial about the, about the climate ever changing because of mankind. Right now, I'm basically speaking to them because they was the ones that planted that seed towards allowing for the world to become so irregular and to become so out of balance right now because of their hard-headedness towards them not listening to people, yes, like Al Gore in 1993 whenever he was running for president, okay? The boomers, the ones that's already in their 70s and their 60s. I just now have turned 60. I'm soon to turn 61 in March, but... These are the people that have brought this type of sorrow and misery and hardship upon to the rest of the innocent people. They have brought this type of misery to all sectors of life all over this planet. And basically what we have here is a failure of communications towards people supporting the oil industry, even though they may not actually be involved towards uh reeking any of the profits off of oil, crude oil coming out of the ground. But what we have here is, is, a, is a discommunication gap between the has's and the has-nots, between those that, that did want to support people like Al Gore 30-plus years ago versus those that didn't. And now we can see the, recu recu recussions, the repercussions on account of that. What they're fixing to talk about right here is another very traumatic area that could actually backfire within a matter of minutes, if not hours, towards Mr. Putin becoming blood hungry for whatever reason, towards wanting to engage himself into the Ukrainian lives people and embarking more misery and sorrow up onto that group of people. I characterize Mr. Putin respectfully in the sense that he's on his last leg pertaining to his ability to rule his people. He realizes that what he has accomplished in his presidency has basically been a total disaster. And now he wants to go out in some sort of a big bang or some sort of a big boom, and this is the way that he feels like that he can uh, vindicate, validating himself towards being a good leader over in Russia, but you keep in mind, he was part of the old KGB in the old USS Yugoslavia Russian territory before the Berlin Wall fell of eradicating that group or that industry of people and becoming what they're supposed to be today towards being more modern and supposedly being more uh, diplomatic. Um you know, as far as having a, a democracy towards voting them in, voting them out. What we're seeing with President Putin reminds me back years ago whenever we used to have chickens on the farm and we would have a dog all of a sudden go wacky and it would start killing chickens. And if you didn't watch it, kill every day I'm chicken on the farm. If it had its, if it's, if it has it, if the dog had its pleasurable way, psychologically speaking, as well as physically speaking, the dog would literally eliminate every chicken on the farm. And you may be saying, well, why is that? It's because of the thrill. Once that dog gets a taste of blood, 
in its mouth, and it gets the thrill of how that chicken dies, flopping around, squalling and bawling as it's coming to its sudden death. That dog gets stimulated by that. It's it's a form of toxic, um, it's almost like a drug of adrenaline that goes through that dog's head that now has motivated that dog towards him even wanting to kill more chickens because now he realizes that's what he's striving for. It's a sickness. I believe that Mr. Putin has a sickness. And in his sickness, he is power hungry. It ain't the fact that the Ukrainians have stood up against the old Yugoslavia way and basically stood on their own feet towards becoming independent. It's the fact that now Mr. Putin feels like that he's going to be looked upon as being a unsuccessful uh, president. And because of it, this is his way of making his mark before he steps out of the eyes of the limelight. This is another area that we're going to be going from bad to worse if this materializes and if they pursue towards wanting to make a, a, a massacre out of the Ukrainian people because they have already done been warned several different times from some several different countries, including our own, that if they do this, there will be harsh, harsh consequences that will be resignated to not only Mr. Putin being the president of Russia, but it will be resignated to his people. So if he wants to bring this type of anguish, this type of hardship upon to his people, for whatever reason, it may be it may be a, a, a some sort of a, a ego trip that he's on. I don't know. If he wants to do this, then he'll have to be the one that will pay the consequences because of the lives that he's that he's basically going to destroy by pursuing his motives in in this type of form. Please listen. Top diplomats from Washington and Moscow met today for talks aimed at averting a Russian invasion of its southern neighbor. NBC's Richard Engel reports from Kiev. Another round of diplomacy between the U.S. and Russia over Ukraine and more meetings that produced no apparent breakthroughs. This time, it was Secretary of State Anthony Blinken meeting directly with Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov. Sergei Lavrov is an experienced diplomat. He's a seasoned negotiator. He is highly prepared for meetings like this. Uh, he's one of the most respected people in Russia. So these negotiations were going to be difficult for Secretary Blinken from the get-go. And they became much more difficult when, just before these talks, President Biden seemed to inject ambiguity about the U.S. position when he said that if Russia were to launch a minor incursion against uh, Ukraine, uh, an incursion that the U.S. and allies were debating about whether that actually happened or if it was serious enough that it would el elicit one kind of response. But if it was a full Russian invasion of this country, there would be sweeping sanctions. The White House quickly clarified the, the, the president's statements in writing just minutes after he said them, and then the president himself came out and clarified those comments. The, the, the apparent divisions uh, going into these meetings made it a, a very difficult round of negotiations for the American Secretary of State. Richard Engel, NBC News, Kiev. In a few hours, NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt and Richard Engel will take you inside Ukraine's cyber defense agency where there's a massive effort to block cyber invasions. Out of COVID-19 news, we start. All right, I want to stop right there. You know, to add insult to misery in the middle of a COVID pandemic that has caused the strain of so many countries... I mean, here in America, we went through basically a little bit of strain in which in our eyes has been a lot of strain in comparison to some of the other countries that have went through what they've went through. 
some of these countries, it's been just devastating towards their governments being able to function and basically uh, protect their people from this disease towards a total wipeout. And it, it has literally uh, brought insult to misery in so many countries, so many different governments, uh, officials' lives that it's not even, it's not even, I can't even begin to touch the bottom of the barrel, scrape the bottom of the barrel towards how bad it's actually been. To add that much more insult to misery, now we got somebody like Putin that is just itching, and I believe it's out of ego, to go out in a bang towards everybody remembering who the old KGB agent was and who he become as being the president of the new federation over in Russia. Basically, all this is going to do is put strains on that much more of the problems that we're dealing with pertaining to global warming. Because anytime there is a war, war requires more fuel. War requires towards things being generated to that purpose during the time of war. That's the reason why that ordinarily they have shortages uh, on tires. They have shortages on this, shortages on gas. Uh, sometimes they actually have to give out stamps uh, to regulate how much gas that people can buy, how, many, how much stuff that they can get, because everything now has become devoted to the war. Well, if everything is devoted to the war pertaining to draining all the natural resources out of the ground, what is that going to do towards global warming? It's only going to make it that much worse because now we're going to be draining the oil out of the ground instead of for survival purposes. Now we're going to be draining the oil out of the ground to go to war with each other and kill a bunch of people. I realize that what has occurred here has been very, very upsetting on an international global scale. Once more, the fault fell upon to those who was in their 70s, 80s, and, and some in their 60s today, that was in government positions, church positions here in America, that should have done the right thing during the latter part of Ronald Reagan's administration, but chose not to. This is all the repercussions of those people that felt like that they was going to be able to overpower, undermine God and God's precious people towards establishing peace here upon to the grounds of not only America, but the world. Those people today should be looked upon and should be mocked and should be marked as being the perpetrators that have caused the world to turn, be turned upside down because of either their intentional moves or their ignorant moves that they have made in regards to this. Because I truly believe that if things would have fell in place the way that they were supposed to have fallen in place, the windmill ministry's missions would have had its favor. It would have had its ability. It would have had its support. It would have had its, its influences towards taking center stage during the latter 80s, early 90s. And today, we would be dealing with a whole different set of circumstances, not only here in America, but throughout the world, if things would have been handled properly. But instead, you know, the Reagans and the Bushes convinced the superpowers, oh, we're not going to destroy the world. We're not going to destroy the world with a nuclear holocaust. If we're gonna, it's going to be destroyed the way the Bible intends for it to be destroyed. But yet now, they went to war towards Desert Storm and Desert Shield. They went to war pretending to Saddam Hussein. And then it wasn't long until we got hit by 9-11, and then we get engaged in another war over in Afghanistan that, that took 20 years out of our lives, that, that we sacrificed men, women, and children to some degree, and, and trillions and trillions of dollars, and us leaving that territory just within the past few months, within 11 days, the very people that we was at war at, which was the Taliban, takes the country back over. Talk about things backfiring in the American politician and preacher's lives here in the past 30 plus years. It has tremendously backfired. 
It has brought more grief and destruction up into people's lives that you could not even begin to imagine. That is the very thing that that various people in this area that could have supported the windmill ministries but chose to push it off, uh, push it under the rug, uh, well, this guy, he's got a problem. He's psychologically, emotionally disturbed. Or this guy's just a liar. Or this guy is, is, is a heresy. Or this guy, he's seeking some sort of a, a public uh, a recognition towards towards on a celebrity scale. Be it as it may, you can come up with all the excuses that you want to, but the bottom line is this. Nobody, I repeat, nobody that I'm aware of, physically, emotionally, psychologically or spiritually supported the windmill ministries in the past 30 plus years that basically put the founder out on the limb to the point that I was hung out to dry. I was not only hung out to dry, but I was supposed to have stopped. I was supposed to have been silenced. But yet, no, they didn't want to go through that final stage like they did with Martin Luther King or like they did with JFK or like they did with other great, great leaders like Buford Pulser down by Pickwick towards assassinating his life. The Tennesseans, as far as I'm concerned, the older group, the boomers, they have literally lost it whenever it comes to them doing what they have done. And to this day, they're still in denial towards not giving account. And it all begins right over there in Kenton, Tennessee in 1983. I have said this before. I'll say it again. It all begins over in Obion County, Northwest Tennessee, in a little town that my mother was raised up in, in Kenton, Tennessee. That's your core of origin where this problem began. Because at that time, in 1983, I had been recognized by the White House that there was a supernatural event that happened in Dennis James Juby Jackson's life, the guy that's speaking right now, that there was a miracle that took place in his life, but because he was talking about things that most people didn't want to talk about or didn't have the knowledge towards talking about, pertaining to the two witnesses, pertaining to the New World Order, pertaining to the Mark of the Beast, pertaining to end-time biblical Bible prophecies, it went over their heads to the degree that they thought I was crazy. And it was much easier to put me over into this category, compartmentalizing me, saying, well, this guy's obviously got a problem. Well, you have exchanged that problem that you thought was a problem in now recognizing that it was this bunch that let me down. It was this bunch that basically throwed me to the wolves it was this bunch that basically hung me out to dry. It was this bunch that w didn't want to support an international, true, spiritual revival that would lead into a revolution, that would lead into world peace. It was this bunch that has caused the reaction of an individual such as Mr. Putin that very well may start something that, as far as I'm concerned, all it's going to be doing is adding that much more insult to misery in regards to the to the hardships that the world is already facing in slowing down the the successes in where we should be and should have been beginning 30 plus years ago. But of course, whenever you have a society over here in America that still to this day, still to this day, I ain't talking about past extensively what happened in the past 30 plus years, but still to this day, as far as I know, does not physically, morally, psychologically, or spiritually support the wind mill ministries. So inevitably, you're going to have people like Mr. Putin and other leaders of various countries like North Korea, and et cetera, et cetera, they're, go they're going to look at the material that I have put out and by people talking about peace, they're going to look at this as it being a bunch of nonsense. They're going to look at this towards it being a hoax. They're going to look at this 
towards it being some sort of a scam or a scheme. That's how they're going to look at it. In other words, they're not going to put they're not going to validate it by putting any water into it. Why? Because the people here in America didn't even support the ideology of the last day message here upon to the planet. Why? Probably thousands of reasons why, but I think the main reason why is because they didn't want to jeopardize their own their own uh, commitment with God to the extent that they was willing to lay down their lives the same as we've had good patriots that's willing to lay down their lives as well as Jesus Christ that laid down his life. You see, the, the Christians in the Bible Belt area talks the good talk. Oh, they can talk the good talk. All this stuff about rapture that ain't that isn't even in the Bible pertaining to the first, second, and the third resurrection that it talks about in Revelations, the King James Version Bible. They can talk the talk. But obviously, they don't walk the walk, and the proof is in the pudding pertaining to how things has turned upside down, not only here in the streets of America, but how that it has turned upside down throughout the world. These are the things that those people that could have engaged in years ago that chose not to, I promise you, will stand in front of God, regardless whether it be a preacher, a teacher, a farmer, a judge, a prosecuting attorney, or whoever. They will stand in front of God and they will give an account towards why they done what they done or why they didn't do what they know that they should have done. And now it's all come home to them. Towards now, it's all hit them in the face. And now they're having to walk around with egg on their face. But yet, no, I still don't get any type of commitment. I still do not get any type of apology. I still do not get any type of recognition towards what went on, in which the recognition, in actuality, isn't to be given to me. It's to be given to the Father, through the Son, through me, because of what the Son has done for me towards saving my life again and again and again, and me being able to document my life as promptly and as professionally as I have towards being able to validate and prove everything that I've been talking about for the past few years on various platforms that I talk on. I can prove these things. So they can try to hide from their commitment they can try to hide from their shame of all these people that could have taken charge towards supporting the windmill ministries. But until I see proof, as far as I'm concerned, they're still got that same frame of mind, which is we don't want peace. We like all the rapes. We like to be $30 trillion in debt. We like all our prisons being full. We like all our young girls becoming impregnated by all these drug dealers and, and having deformed children and messed up minds. We like the fact that we went to war with a country for 20 years and 11 days later, the very people that we was at war at took the country back over. They like the fact that all this drug addiction and drug overdoses and gun violence that has basically invendated our streets and invendated our communities the way that it has. That's the only thing left in a, in a mind of reason that I can think of because to this day, I still have not gotten this or a telephone call or a text message that contradicts what I just got through saying. So as far as I'm concerned, you're opening up a door for maniacs. I'm going to use the word maniac pertaining to President Putin and what he's engaging in towards crossing the line, the very line that he knows that he shouldn't cross that would jeopardize thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of lives if he continues on the path that he is on. So by me saying that, I say this. If something does escalate into a major battle, 
regardless whether it be over in Russia, regardless whether it be in the Middle East, regardless whether it be pertaining to the North Koreans, uh, Kim Young Young, or whatever his name is, you have nobody to blame other than yourselves because you have brought these illegitimacies upon to not only the guilty, but also the lives of the innocent pertaining to the works of Satan that is now, just as the scriptures predicts, coming down in great wrath, taking vengeance upon them who know not God and basically just playing with people's lives down here. And the people are so stupid, are blinded, ignorant, I'm going to use the word ignorant, untaught or taught incorrectly, that they actually think that it's God that's bringing all these tornadoes down here upon to us or all these bad events pertaining to floods, famines, and, and hurricanes, and fires, and etc. They actually think that it's God that's doing this, and it's not God that's doing this. It's the devil that's doing this, and the works of the devil that is causing mankind to do this. And until we put a red light on this in identifying the crucialness in trying to reverse this, it's only going to get worse and worse and worse pertaining to the Oceans rising, the, the, the ice melting, pertaining to uh, basically destroying habitats uh, where not only the penguins live, but the white bear lives. Um, it's only going to get worse with the drug overdoses and the gun violence. It's all only going to get worse. And you can explain that to various people over there in Kenton, Tennessee, because that is the core of origin where it all began in 1983. And I can validate that story. I can prove it. On paper. Prove it. Because I've kept all my paperwork. From every occurrence, regardless whether it was occurrence coming from the law enforcement agencies or the occurrences coming from the medical uh, agencies. I've kept all my paperwork. I can prove it. In addition to all the conversations and all the certified mail that went to the White House during the events of all that that I'm talking about, I can prove it. So by me saying all that pertaining to President Putin, I just pray to God that there's enough smart people in the world that they can identify the problem in which I think that they have, but they really hadn't yet put it in the motion of just exactly how serious that it could possibly lead into all of our lives if we continue on this path of doom that we're on. This ministry has always supported peace. This ministry has always supported love. This ministry has always supported grace. This ministry has always supported the things that the Heavenly Father gave as a gift pertaining to the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. The reason why that I never got any supporters is because this ministry also supports the things pertaining to the end time biblical Bible prophecies of the apocalyptic events that have already been pre-selected and, and, and chosen by God, not by me, but by God, towards it demonstrating itself in the end time events. And until we see a real revival where people's lives are being transfigurated and the old, the, bo the boomers, come to the understanding that what that they have done has been one of the most horriblest, horriblest things that they have brought upon to their own sector of people and the world. Until that happens, we're going to see it get worse and worse and worse. And people like me are going to sit back and think, well, this obviously is what they want. They're wanting a third world war to break out over in in Russia or somewhere over in the Ukrainian area. They're wanting third world war, these warmongers and whoremongers. They're wanting all these things to turn turn to bodily injury to the point that, that all of our lives become at risk, that all of our lives is in doom pertaining to this to this ungodly, evil, demonic movement that started 30 plus years ago. 30 plus years ago. I'm now 60 years old. It's only by the grace of God that I can sit here and talk to you the way that I'm talking to you right now in identifying the problems that has occurred in the past and in telling people what that they need to do in the future. It's only by the grace of God that I can sit here without either death or, or permanent injury to the point that I'm not either 
in bed, cripple, or dead, or in jail, or in a mental institution, that I can actually sit here and try to continue to help my people again and again and again that I've been trying to do for the past 30 plus years. Obviously, they didn't want my help. The same way as the Jews and the people over in the Middle East in the Holy Land didn't want Jesus' help 2,000 years ago, and we see what happened to that bunch of people. What did Christ say in the last days? He said, whenever you see Jerusalem accomplished with arms, know that the desolation is at hand. Now, folks, I don't know. I'm not all that educated pertaining to schooling, uh, but I do claim to have some common sense. And whenever God says these things through his teachings of Christ, that when you see, and if you can't see that Jerusalem has accomplished with arms pertaining to their armies over there and what they do in their self-defense, if you can't see this, it's obviously because you don't want to see it, okay? But whenever it says that no, that we're at the doors, we're at the end, that's exactly what it means. I did not predestinate the end. I didn't self-appoint the end. I didn't self-appoint myself to be in the position that I'm in right now. God did. And if you got any complaints, take it to the complaining department. Take it to God. And he'll take it up with you towards what has been going on and what inevitably is going to continue to go on unless we see a full 180 degree turn in something different. And as things continue to get hairier and hairier with people like Mr. Putin, people like Kim Young Young, people like China, other other uh, other self motivated um, I'm not going to use the word demonic, but other self-motivated tyrants that wants to basically drive or, or, or lead their people in the wrong areas towards the very opposite of our republic, the very opposite of democracy. If you want to see these things continue to get worse and worse and worse, well, sit on your hands, okay? Continue to badmouth me continue to slander me, continue to wish death upon me, and the worst things of, of all worse, w wish that just my life just basically disappeared away from your life. Continue to do what you're doing, and you're going to continue to see the same results. They teach this in the psychiatric community pertaining to Alcohol Anonymous, that it's actually a form of insanity. That if you continue to keep doing the same thing, the same thing, and you expect different results, it is a form of insanity because you're not going to get different results by doing the same thing. The only way that you're going to get different results is to do something different. And as of me right now, me, myself, and I, and God Almighty that's leading me to say these things and put out this material, as of now... The only thing that I can see is the very same thing that I've been seeing for the past 30 plus years towards a group of people that talk the talk, but aren't willing to walk the walk. In other words, they can dish it out, but just like the Bible talks about pertaining to a bunch of heathens or a bunch of hypocrites, they can dish it out, but they can't take it. Why can't they take it? Because they feel inferior about God appointing me in this position. They have said to themselves, well, we're not going to have this man rule our lives. Okay. If you don't want somebody with righteousness ruling your lives, continue on the path that you're on and let the devil rule your life. And eventually, it'll bring destruction in all of our lives. That's right. You will die of diseases. You will die of, of dilapidated 
uh, disrespectful occurrences pertaining to gun violence and overdoses and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you will not bring any type of glory to not only your country, but you won't bring any glory to God. To where if you would have stood up the way that you were supposed to have stood up 30 plus years ago, and right now I'm talking, I'm, I'm generating this conversation right now over to Kenton, Tennessee. If you would have stood up the way you were supposed to have stood up, even though an individual was talking stuff that, that had never been talked about pertaining to the New World Order, uh, the Mark of the Beast, the Two Witnesses, Satan coming in the flesh, the opening of the seals. If you would have listened rather than contradict, if you would have supported rather than go against, we would have seen different results. But because we didn't see those things, now you're seeing the results. If you want to continue to see the same results, continue to do the exact same thing that you've been doing for the past 30 plus years. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. Well, we can't do that because if we do that, that means Juby was right and we was wrong. Well, let me give you a bit of insight. They probably come to that same conclusion whenever the rains begin to come, okay? And it started raining day after day after day. And keep in mind, they have never experienced any type of rain here upon to the planet until Mo Noah finally finished the boat and God drove all the animals into the boat, including Noah and his family, and it began to rain. And it began to rain. And it began to rain. And there was a few of them that started waking up. And started saying, oh my God, this man was right. We should have supported this man. And they went to going and beating on the sides of the boat. Let us in. Let us in. Let us in. We're sorry. We're sorry. We're let us in. You was right, Noah. You was right. But at that point in time, the door had done been shutting. And nobody was going to get in. Who was in the boat? was going to remain in the boat and who was out of the boat was going to remain out of the boat and God fulfilled his commitment towards what that he had committed to Noah by destroying the old world and that's exactly where society is being driven off into right now not of anything that I've done but what he has done and what he's going to do and what he's promised to do be it as it may, rather not it be the good or the bad, you have brought this upon to yourselves, and the fault falls upon to the feet of those that would not, did not, truly want to serve God and support a global, international, known ministry by the name of the Windmill Ministries Missions. That, my friend, will go down in empathy pertaining to after this world is dead and gone and the stars and elements of the, of the universe is all gone and God recreates a new heaven and a new earth, that will be historically written in God's book, in God's manual, that will never, ever be forgotten. Never either in the supernatural world pertaining to God and his holy angels or the physical world pertaining to humanity, these morbids down here up onto the planet, that will be something that will be instilled and ingrained into the walls of God's holy chamber. The same way that it was instilled and ingrained towards a group of people that thought that Noah was crazy and would not, did not support him. Those will be events written on God's table that will never, ever go away. Because the Bible says that though heaven and earth may pass, my words, this is, this is God's son talking here, Jesus, my words will not pass. For it would have been easier for all of heaven and for all of earth to pass than for one jot 
are for one tittle of the word thy God to fail. That's the only reason why at the age of 60 I can sit here and disclose and comment and talk about the things that I'm talking about is because it was appointed, not me appointing God, but God appointing me 30 plus years ago towards me resignating the very same message today as I did back then is the reason why that I can put this message out. And as things escalate and as they get worse and as we continue to see people like President Putin continue to go over the boundaries, go over that, that, uh, that red line, we're going to see things escalate and get worse. I didn't realize how demonic that it was not only then in, in uh, the late 80s, early 90s, whenever Jimmy Swaggart had fallen with the uh, Jimmy Swaggart ministry, I didn't realize how demonic and demented that America was then, and I didn't realize how demented and how demonic that America was until I basically come back here in 20 and 14 into this very same area that I was raised up in since a knee high to a grasshopper in Northwest Tennessee until I come back here. Since I've come back here, it has been a grand eye-opener towards exactly the powers at bay, towards not only what I was dealing with then, but what I'm dealing with now. And the people have generated this hardship upon to themselves. And whenever I say the people, I'm talking about the so-called Christian people. They have generated this hardship upon to themselves. And the fault falls upon the feet of those that could have done something but chose not to. And as things continue to get worse, I don't know if it's pride. I don't know if it's arrogantness. I don't know if it's, it's somebody with a bad ego. I don't know what the deal is. I just know this, that after all the thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of material and automobiles and time and effort and energy that I put out towards, towards glorifying my Heavenly Father and putting out this message to this day, to this day, I do not have no known, K-N-O-W, known, real, physical, genuine, Christian supporters supporting the Windmill Ministries missions. Now, you can act like you support me. Oh, Dennis, we support you morally, man. We're praying for you every day, right? Well, what good is that? Tell me what bank I can take that to and get it cashed. Uh-huh. That ain't worth a nickel. Once more, it's all talk. White man speaking with forked tongue. They talk about peace. But yet now they're in glued to their TVs at night, watching crime and violence and all kinds of bloodshed that they've become contaminated with that now has generated not only in their entertainment world, but now it's generated into their real world to where now that's the things that we see and hear of on a day-to-day, everyday occurrence. And I'm telling you now, there's going to come a time when God the Father, the Holy Father, Whenever he gets ready to draw that red line and say, that's it. Enough is enough. Whenever he reaches the point of looking down onto society the same way that he looked upon Sodom and Gomorrah and say, could I even find as many as one? I will spare the city and can't find that one. That's whenever God says, okay, I realize now what I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with a hopeless situation, the same that I was dealing with during the time of Noah. And it's time for me to put my foot down. And I guarantee you, whenever God decides to do this, you will know the difference between God making a move versus the devil bringing tornadoes and hardships and drugs and guns and everything else into society. I promise you, you will know the difference when God gets ready to put his hand down or put his foot down. Just like the people during the era of Noah. They knew that they had messed up whenever it started raining and they was all in shock because of this element that was falling from the sky. And not only did it fall from the sky, but it continued to fall and it continued to fall and it continued to fall. After about 24 hours of that, they started saying, oh my God, what have we done? 
Another day went by. Oh my God, this man was right. Then another day went by. Oh my God, what can we do to change this? And there wasn't nothing, I repeat, nothing that that group of people could do at that point in time towards stopping what had already been decided. Because once God decides to do something, he fulfills his promises. Not as man fulfills them, but as he fulfills them. Just like the word of God says that it would have been easier for all of heaven and earth to pass than for one jot or one tittle of the word thy God to fail. If God has promised it, he'll fulfill it. And if he doesn't fulfill it one way, he'll fulfill it another. He will fulfill it. Satan will be the loser. Lucifer and the Antichrist and all those that followed after him will pay the ultimate price for this because they have contaminated the creation of God again and again and again. And they'll pay for it. They'll pay the ultimate price for it towards that second death towards being put or isolated in a tormented area to where they will burn and be tormented day and night, night and day, day and night, night and day for eternity, for eternity. Now you see those things right there that's popped up on the screen right there that looks like little microscopic germs? Guess what? That's what they are. They're microscopic germs. Well, you know, we know now in the 21st century that according to our technology, those things exist. Germs and viruses exist in the real world. Parasites, etc., etc. They exist. Now, you can't see them with the human eye. You can't see them. Sometimes you can't even feel them. Can't smell them. But I bet you this, you can identify the repercussions on account of them because if enough of them get in your bloodstream and attack you just right it can destroy your life just within a matter of days if not weeks to where you can become a very very strong healthy individual that could basically run the the marathon or the iron man marathon and all of a sudden it'll put you down like cutting a weed of grass Okay, the point that I'm trying to make is this in closing. We can't see the wind, all right? Unless it's blowing tremendously like a tornado. Then you can actually see a tornado, physically see a tornado. But just the wind in general that blows, if it's blowing 70, 80 mile an hour, all of a sudden downstream winds come down, you can't see the wind. You might can feel the wind. You might can hear the wind. But physically speaking, you cannot see the wind. But what you can see is the re repercussions after the wind. Just like you can see the repercussions whenever that little bitty tiny microscopic virus enters into your life, enters into your body, you can see the repercussions of what that it is doing and what that it possibly may do. Okay? I don't wish this upon anybody, even my greatest worst enemies. I don't wish this upon nobody, but I, I'm trying to make a point here in my ending uh, comments. If society continues to do what they're doing towards not only ignoring the facts about climate change, but if they continue to do what they're doing, pertaining to the sinful activities that have inundated the world, not just here in America, but the world. I promise you, you will see the results. The same as you see the results whenever the wind is blowing. Though you can't see the wind, you see the results. Though you can't see that microscopic germ, unless you have the right type of equipment, you see the results. That's the point that I'm trying to make. This stupidness, this hard-headedness, and that's exactly what it is. You know, there, there comes a point in time that to where you can no longer plead insanity. You can no longer step under the guidelines to say, well, I didn't know. Oh, really? 
I just imagine that what that's exactly what they were saying during the time that they was all drowning. Well, I didn't know that Noah was touched by God and that that he was telling us the truth. We thought he was crazy. Well, you can think whatever you want to think. You can think in one hand and poo-poo in the other and see which one fills up the quickest. But I guarantee you to this day, though their dead bones and carcasses have been spread all over the world, to this day, because of what went on pertaining to the great flood, there's still people that regrets that they didn't do what they know that they should have done that they didn't do. But now it's too late. Because now their lives has entered into another phase. It's, le it's went into a different level. The level of the supernatural. They'll still be given another chance. One other chance. And it will be a very, very tight, remote, uh, very quick, intimate chance to the point that, if, according to the Bible, the way that I understand it, if they follow after that Antichrist demonic spirit, the final and last time in the Gog and Magog, that will be it. That will be it. In other, in other words, God's going to wean the bad out, just like he said that he would. He said that he would separate the wheat from the tares, and this is the way that he's doing it. He starts out in one form, and he goes down into another form, and that final form will be whenever God Almighty on a supernatural scale sits on the great throne called the great white throne of judgment and people follow after that demonic antichrist rebellious spirit again. That will be the second death. Thanks again for listening. Good luck to all of us as we're all struggling towards survival as our lives is being entangled and troubled with all these different affairs, I still say, and I'm going to continue to say, that it would have been different if, if it was handled different, beginning in Ronald Reagan's administration. God bless. God bless America. And good luck to all of us from the bottom of my heart. And shalom. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. out and touch the Lord as he goes by. You'll find he's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. Reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. You'll find He's not too busy to hear your heart cry. Oh me, I need to turn this off, don't I? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.